Hi everyone, today I'm to show you a much faster 3D printer compared to my old model. So I spend a lot of time optimizing and now the machine is significantly faster, but also a little bit more complex, but not much. So let's turn this on, just have to press this button right here. And let's just go through the components. You might recognize this from my fast 2D printer. We could also use this system for the fast 3D printer. So now let's take a look at the start. So first of all, we have this chest here, which contains some shulker boxes, which contain items. This is basically the program. Let's click on a shulker box. So the glass blocks represent air blocks and the concrete blocks represent the corresponding blocks of the 3D structure. So every 12 game ticks, one of those items would be sent out by this dropper right here. And it is sent over those 17 item filters. For every color, we have an item filter. Yeah, and depending what we selected, we take out um, the corresponding color. Here is a color converter again. Um, yeah, it just made it easy on me. I used uh, command blocks to fill up the concrete powder. But if you really want to, it could also make a storage in survival. Um, so now the, item, or the blocks would fall down. Just shot over by those slime box right here, then it lands here. And then they are sent over this fence. And this is a distribution system for the falling block entities. This is basically uh, is a workaround for the 12 block push limit. Because we could fill up a lane, which is 16 blocks long, with this design right here. So after this complete lane is filled up, it would be sent down. So here we have a yeah, block update detector, and then it's sent down. Here we have an intermediate storage, um, so some lanes could pile up, because of course the flying machine that distributes the items into the chamber it takes longer to fly to the yeah, complete back of the chamber than it would take to fly to the, the first lane. That's why we have the option to pile up some blocks and we wouldn't need to slow down the whole system at the top because the flying machine isn't fast enough. So as you can see, the machine waits and those blocks are only sent down once the flying machine is back in. Then you can also take a look at the second improvement I made. So as you can see, we no longer have a water dispenser on every layer, just on every second layer now. Because we have the sand blocks, we could yeah, distribute the water on top of the concrete powder and sand blocks now. And this basically is good for two layers because the first layer is turned into concrete by the water and then we have the water layer and the blocks of the second layer which has fallen water also turn into concrete. So that's why we only need water dispensers for every second layer. Um, yeah, What's also interesting is that you don't need to do any water removal in the end, you need to do sand removal. Which in my opinion is a lot simpler because you could just stick it away with a shovel or even remove blocks under it and the uh, sand blocks that would drop down be broken by the by this redstone dust. You could also use torches or whatever. Slabs would also work. So now we've I'm almost done printing this 2D pixel art. Now also the water would be activated. The concrete powder is turned into concrete. Of course I said this is a 3D printer. Um, I thought this pixel art was a nice demonstration. Um, it takes about three minutes to print out this 16 by 16 pixel art, but the whole 3D um, structure, which is uh, 34 blocks high and 16 by 16, it would take 90 minutes. So we're gonna make a quick time lapse and I'm gonna print something else. Um, just want to say, if the old machine, it would have taken about 30 hours to print a 16 by 16 by 34. So it's about 18 times faster with the new one now.
All right, so after 90 minutes, you got something like this. And now let's remove the blocks below it, like spike incoming, and break the set. So I printed out a little statue of my skin. Uh, all that's left to do is move the sand. I'm going to quickly do that. Looks awesome, doesn't it? So you might also be wondering how you could get the instructions for the machine. And yeah, for that, we have to go into MC Edit. So now in order to make it easier to get the instructions for the machine, my friend Omega X made an MC Edit filter. Omega also does other stuff. For example, he recently showed a fortress and dungeon bounding box mod. You can find a link to his channel in the video description. So now to get the instructions for the 3D printer, you have to select the volume of blocks you want to convert it to instructions. So here we have my skin out of concrete blocks in MC Edit. At the moment it displays those new concrete blocks as future blocks, um, but it's no problem. Then uh, yeah, put the filter in the MC Edit folder for filters, and then you can find it here. And then you have to select a position where you would put the chests, and then just have to select filter and now let's save this and now it has converted the 3D stru structure into instructions. So basically it goes from bottom to top and left to right and scans the blocks and puts in the corresponding blocks into boxes. Um, yeah, for You can, can use 16 different concrete blocks, uh, no other blocks and of course air blocks which would be glass blocks in the Schalke boxes. So one more note for the filter, you need to define positions and you can easily find out a position near you by just by pressing Ctrl and G to get some positions near you in the MC Edit. So back in Minecraft, here we have the pillar with the, yeah, with the program basically. Now we just have to put it in the right order. So those are the six dull chests for the 3D printer and just have to put it in the right order. So basically from the lowest chest, top left to right, second row, then the third row, then the next chest, just from bottom to top. And this will print out your 3D structure. So I want to quickly talk about some systems in a little bit more detail. So first of all, you might have noticed that I use command blocks to refill the concrete powder and sand storage. This is just for convenience sake. So in my last video, I already showed that you could use the end portal and a gravity block tubing to refill the concrete powder and sand storage. That would be also an option here. And uh, yeah, I showed this in the last video. This is it's doable in survival, but um, yeah, didn't do it this time. But just watch my old video if you want to see how this could be done. Of course, you could also build a storage um, in the overworld, for example, or in another dimension with some blocks. It would be also an option. And that's why the color converter is useful. Instead of having 16 different storages for colors, you just need two, basically one for sand, one for concrete powder. Storage could look like this, um, where you would power all of those pistons at once and you would always get a single sand block out of it. Just think about it, you would always power those and it would just fall down if there's space. Just power all the pistons at once. Maybe should have built something up, but I guess you get the idea. This would be a storage for sand. Could of course build this up to sky limit and easily store thousands of sand blocks. And it would be all transported to a single output here. So if you want to use this somewhere without an end portal or outside of the spawn chunks, then it might be optional to build one of those storages, but I guess this 3D printer is not that useful for survival. It's just, yeah, because it's doable, I thought it was a fun idea. I especially like the distribution system for the falling block entities. I think this was a really clever idea to use the fences um, because, of course, you're not limited by the 16 block push limit, and um, yeah, it works really good. Uh, of course, the challenge here was that the falling block entities are pushed down by the blocks that send in, which also act as a barrier block, so they would stop the next falling block entities in the correct position. And we detect the falling block entities with the tripwire hooks, um, but only the last piston should push in the block. And that's how I solved this issue. So here we have a line of droppers uh, with one item in it. And the tripwire hooks would always 
activate all the droppers, but of course if there's no item in it, then nothing happens. Only the last dropper in the chain would activate the sticky piston right here, which pushes in the rail here. So this is important because if there's no rail, then yeah, of course no rail would be powered by this block where the tripwire hook is attached, which um, yeah activates the sticky piston right here, which pushes in the barrier block. And this is just a T flip flop because we get two signals once the rail once the rail is uh, turned on and off. That's why we have the T flip flop here. And yeah, this always makes sure that we have a block in the correct position, despite the Falling block entity is activating each tripwire hook on the way to the last position. Downside of the systems, of course, it's not infinitely expandable. The falling block entities would lose momentum. Um, I haven't really tested how far you could go with it, but I guess a few more blocks is definitely possible. I think a 30 by 30 uh, footprint for the 3D printer should be doable with just a single one. And after that, you basically to come up with something, maybe drop the entities down on a second fence and push them again. Maybe that's an option um, if you would want to have a 100 by 100 3D printer, but yeah, who needs that? So there's one last system I would talk about a little bit uh, because I spent several hours with this issue. Um, it's the distribution of the falling block or the gravity blocks to the flying machines. So basically those pistons would quickly retract, then one of those blocks could pass through, then the pistons extend again and basically this happens. But then we have the issue, those blocks would turn into falling block entities. And basically, if in the wrong moment, a block from the top high momentum falls down, while those blocks also fall down, they have, they have falling block entities, and then the other entities can pass through. And then you would have the issue that two falling block entities would try to occupy the same uh, position, and then one would pop as an item. Now that's why I need to prevent this from happening. And I just did that. Whenever I send down blocks, I could yeah, do this. Then this system activates, which stops the, for, the, 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 yeah, the flying machine from launching. So if we were to have some items right here, basically this piston here extends and this disconnects the wire, which would launch the flying machine. So let's do it once more. Um, maybe let's stop the falling block to actually get it down there. So you can see here, we stop it. So the falling block has enough time to, to land and yeah, issue solved. So one more note, if you want to try this machine out with the world download, um, there needs to be an item in this bottom dropper. All the other droppers should be empty. And at the top, we have a T flip flop because we only activate uh, dispensers on every second layer. And yeah, here it is. here's the T flip flop. I'm gonna use a gold block to mark it. Should be always down. Uh, so basically what happens is the flying machine, when it sends over the blocks for the last lane, would activate this repeater right here, which launches this flying machine that brings back the observers. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.